point of getting my shot like that, but okay. Some people just, I don't know, man. I don't be getting some people in the gym. Let people do their fucking business. All right, family, short commentary for this session. Uh, look, man, I'm gonna start doing that shit a little bit more often where I see some fuck shit going on in the gym. I'm gonna start really just calling motherfuckers out, man. For real, fuck it. I've been wanting to do that shit for a long time. I think it's just about that time. Proper gym etiquette does bring out my petty, airy side at the end of the day. So, back session guys rowing, primarily rowing. But I did do a couple of lats, so it was a little bit of both. I'm sorry, a little bit of both. Uh, did the seal rows, and I'm doing some bent over barbell rows. Then I did wide grip lat pull down because, you know, my, I want some lats. Like, it is what it is. I think lats are just the shit. And then I closed out the back session with some reverse grip, reverse, reverse grip pull downs. About to get ready to see in a minute, guys. So reverse lat, reverse lat pull downs to really start engaging on the upper part of the lats. Uh, and this was the back session, guys. I closed it out with some tries. Of course, it is a back and try session. So did the dip, machine dip, because, well, everything was taken. All bitches were taken. And so now my boy Adrian came into the building. And so I'm about to close out this session with a little bit of edit. Let's get it. All right, family, we closed out this tricep. Got my man Adrian here. We're going to go to war with the barbell, baby. War time. My last, my last hurrah for the day right here. It's not my fault You've been lying, saying that I took away your peace Drowning by yourself, now you wanna blame me Like you have no options I take your options Alright family, so Time for a little bit of cooking I'm gonna show you guys how I went from this beautiful piece of chuck roast And turned it into this masterpiece right here money shot guys ultimate money, money shot. shot you did it money shot right there yes all right family so here is the before uh i've already seasoned it i seasoned it with some brown sugar i seasoned it with uh some garlic butter some um some roasted gar roast some garlic powder, um, 
some garlic butter as you guys saw some steak seasoning um a little bit of lemon to add a little kick to it uh a little bit of a little bit of cajun seasoning a little and some smokehouse maple uh covering all the sides up i let it sit in a marinade right here this uh smoky show you guys let's sit right here this marinade in the bag i i did this before i went to the gym today uh that was like eight o'clock it is now four or five almost six i've been home since four so uh right now i was sitting out for a while because i have learned recently i just learned that you can't cook this kind of chuck roast cold it needs to be room temperature. It's getting there, guys. And I would say by another 10 minutes or so, it should be ready to cook. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit some more. As you saw, I just cut up some potatoes to show you guys. In the meanwhile, I cut up some potatoes. So today's menu, this menu is gonna be a pot roast with some gravy, uh, cornbread, and some rice. So basically like a beef tip and rice kind of thing with the pot roast. We're gonna use a bunch of stuff, a bunch of vegetables are gonna be in there too. So it's gonna be like a medley of a little bit of everything, guys. So uh, I probably will do some commentary as I'm doing it because I'm gonna be real busy. Uh, there's a lot going on. I'm actually following following with one of the uh, YouTubers I have recently really checked out, Mr. Make It Happen. I'll link his shit. I'm following his example. So everything that he is doing, I was gonna go on my tablet, listen to him, and we're gonna follow everything he does but right now i need this meat to get room temperature it's still not there yet so i'm gonna wait about another 10 15 minutes and it should be there once it's room temperature everything's already warmed up i am going to start the vet the, uh i'm going to start the potatoes right now uh i'm going to put them in there real quick so let me go ahead and get this started so potatoes real simple guys i use butter Put this right there a little bit, like that. Let it get hot a little bit, and then I'm gonna put some butter. Yes, I got the cheap ass butter, guys. I ain't gonna lie to you. Your boy's gonna fudge it a little bit, so I gotta do what I gotta do. So I'm gonna put this butter on there, let it melt off a little bit into this pot, and then we're gonna go ahead and start the potatoes off right now, cause those are gonna take a little bit to cook, so. Go ahead and get that started here. Right. All right, family. So let's go ahead and get started for tonight or this night's dinner, which is last night's dinner. So the meat, as I expressed, had to be uh, in room temperature. So it wasn't quite there yet. So I went on ahead and started on the potatoes. I already had cut them up. Don't need to see you no know, cutting potatoes. That can get kind of boring. Um, but I'm gonna throw this video before I start. I wanna throw this video into a separate video so that people want, if you wanna see the cooking part, they can go straight to the video. So I'm gonna edit this one and just edit this part of the video. So as you see, I'm cutting potatoes, getting those sprouts, getting those little rough patches out as you saw, thoroughly washing those potatoes because uh, I was cutting them on the table. They didn't want their paint from the table and the paint from uh, the lead from the knife as well the shards and you know get onto the potatoes so make sure you wash those real thorough real real thorough because trust me food poisoning is a motherfucker uh season the rice with butter um i just use butter as my coat and i put it all around the rings the ring of the pot so it won't try to you know, stick to it uh season it with some cajun seasoning and some gar more garlic butter I wanted my potatoes to have a buttery flavor. I love it when my potatoes have that buttery flavor uh, whenever I roast them. Uh, I usually roast potatoes like freaking four times a week, man. Like I am a potato head family. Like I thoroughly love potatoes. Those are like a main source of carbs. Covered them up, left them sitting there for duration. Uh, then start, now my, my meat was finally at room temperature after sitting out for about an hour. So uh, let it just sit there for a little while longer. Went to the onions, guys. Diced me some onions, then cut them too. 
didn't want them cut them too thin because they were going to be a large, uh, large onions. Cut off that little access right there. Cut off the little strings. Make sure I had just some onions. So it was some onion that was probably going to be left out. But for the most part, just one onion, one large onion. As you see, I'm cutting into real big part, real big pieces, and I'm taking those pieces out and I'm gonna put them into my drainage pot. Uh, tearing them piece by piece. This is going to go on my sauce on my gravy um, when the meat is done. So just peel them all out or one by one. Uh, yeah, I did cry a little bit because you no, know, hey, it is what it is. When you cut onion, you're going to tear the fuck up. And again, wash them real thorough into the, uh, my drainage pot. Wash them out real thorough, real nice. Let them sit for a minute. And then I set them off to the side. Now it's time for the meat. Now it's time for the star. So graze them with some flour. As you see, I'm about to actually lay a lot of flour out on the <laughs> on the table. So yeah, I kind of messed up there. But hey, I got it up. It was all good. Make sure I evenly coated the uh, chuck roast with flour. Uh, all sides too, guys. I'm get all the sides, all the assets that you can see on the plate. That's what I'm gonna get with the sides. I'm gonna cover it all the way up. Make sure it's all flour. Now I'm using flour because I want a nice graze. I want that crispiness. Also, I want some of that crispiness to go onto my gravy and my sauce to give it a little bit of more flavor. Now I'm placing in this uh, the pot. The pot's already warmed up. Again, this is a little bit of uh, this is a little bit of classic olive oil and butter. Uh, I have learned when you season steaks and roast with butter, it makes them even more tender along with onion. Uh, as you see, I'm pressing down on it to make sure I get evenly, I want it to evenly cook. If you don't press down on a big part of meat like this, it's not gonna cook all the way. And as you see, it, I could cook for about three to five minutes and then I turn it over. It don't take long to cook this, guys. If you're pressing it down, it don't take long. You see all that crust, that, that, that even crust right there? Uh, as you saw, it had a bunch of lines onto the meat. That's what you want. You see how the lines has separated with the meat. That means it's getting cooked, it's getting ready, it's getting tender. And I threw even more butter on there to make to make it even more tender. Um, like I said, it was already marinated for eight hours, basically, primarily eight hours. to give y'all a little money shot so moving on to my gravy as you see i put butter onto the gravy as well yes i am going to use a lot of butter uh that is beef bouillon uh that i did not know that e acquired and i'm glad she did because this was a big big help in making my sauce uh, on my gravy so a little, put a little beef bouillon i'm gonna put some chicken broth as you guys are gonna see in a minute uh, the onions that I had peeled and made before are now for to go onto here to give it its flavor that it so desires. And then I wanna go ahead and put the chicken broth on here. I didn't have a lot left, but I had enough to make the sauce. So basically the rest of my chicken broth took my whisk, uh, took my plastic whisk, which was huge guys, huge, huge, huge. Uh, and just started whisking it around. You see it was loose, which is what I wanted right now. Added some cornstarch. Cornstarch, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, when you put it, it makes your gravy or your sauce thicker. So if you want it real thick, like I kind of wanted it real thick, I added cornstarch to it, uh, whisk it again, added some more beef bouillon to give it a little bit of flavor, give it some more flavor. I want that hot roast flavor. So beef bouillon, thank you, E. This came through in the clutch. As you guys can see, it is seeping on to the uh to the gravy put three strips put three strips of basil leaves in there to add even more basil leaves brings out some shit man i look i'm learning as i go learning as i go and as you see that sauce that beef bouillon all that started started to thicken up and it started to look real nice and tasty uh with the meat it was put into a foil so i can keep the juices on there Put it on my little rack and then I set it in there, set it inside the oven. I kept the oven on like 300 for now. Went back to the potatoes, they looked about done. I had the potatoes cooking for about ooh, 20, 25 minutes. It takes a while for, for potatoes to cook, man. 
and then I added a little bit more butter. You're gonna hear me say butter a lot, guys. Sorry, it is what it is. Uh, more butter to there, and as you see, the sauce is getting is nice and thick now. I did have to add a little bit more, a little bit more cornstarch into there. All right, family, so now I'm pouring the sauce into a pot because the skillet was just gonna be too little for everything I'm gonna put on there. What you're not, what you're not gonna see is I'm gonna put some carrots on there, some green beans, and I'll put the potatoes in there. Uh, you're not gonna see that part, but you'll see that last part. So now I'm gonna take out my, my chuck roast and I'm going to place it. Look at that, guys, it looks so fucking good. Wow, wow, wow. We're gonna put that in here with some vegetables, potatoes, and let it cook. So, all right, fit fell. So, the pot roast is now in my stove. Two and a half hours. I'm gonna set my timer and it should be done. I will get back to y'all then. And we're gonna see the finished product. Looking really good, by the way. Thank you, boy. I nailed this one as well. It's not complete now. What I did not show you is I did make the cornbread. Everybody know I make cornbread. Pretty self explanatory. Made some rice right here. Nice buttery rice. And here is the star right here. The roast is done, guys. It is all the way done. Now, one thing to test it is to take a fork. If I can get to the pieces here. There it is right there. See that little piece right here? I'm gonna take my fork and turn it. If it turns correctly, that means this is done. So we're gonna do a fork test as I learned today. Let's see if it turns. So let's see. Find out right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You see that guy? See how it broke up right there? That means it's done. This guy's breaking up right there. Yep. Yeah, that means this thing is done. It is done, done, done. So I'm gonna let E taste it. See how she likes it. And yeah, we're gonna eat and we're gonna have ourselves a nice, very nice dinner. Here it is right here, little pot roast. Mm -hmm. Oh there you go. This is good. Very, very good. Tasty. I do. It has the gravy and how the sauce and gravy. Now that's what you fix on a cold, rainy kind of winter night. Mm -hmm. That will put you to sleep. That that's good. good. You did good. You did really good. You did really, really good. This is my first time ever fixing hot roast like this. First time. Okay, so. It's not my fault You've been lying saying that I took away your peace Drowning by yourself, now you wanna blame me Like you have no options I ain't take your options Now I'm not the problem Man, that's on you You've been terrorizing me yeah, I'm always wrong I knew you lost your mind when you dropped that bomb Girl, are you crazy? Yeah, you must be crazy I've been thinking lately Lately it's you You stole your peace Put it on